Hey YouTubers, Cybernate24 here, here to make another video, and this is all about buying a used chainsaw. Now, if you're looking for inexpensive chainsaws like Poulon, Remington, Home Light, and other such brands like that, you can get them for like $100. But the thing is, when you buy saws like that, you're not going to get a very good quality. They're mainly designed for homeowner use and they're, the use is very sparingly. I mean, it's not something that you would constantly use for cutting firewood and definitely not for felling trees of any sorts because A, they're underpowered and B, they have a small bar and chain. But one thing I'm going to show you is what do you look for in finding a used chainsaw? You can find a lot of used chainsaws out there on eBay. Some of my stuff, a lot of my saws that I have are from eBay. The 394 was from eBay. The 288 I'm rebuilding is from eBay. The 350 I rebuilt was for, was an eBay purchase, and a lot of the parts were from eBay. But when looking at a used saw, especially if you got the opportunity of actually looking at it, and you know physically looking at it with your own eyes, not by pictures or video or anything like that, but just seeing for yourself, one thing you want to know is is the saw in decent condition. Just by looking at it alone doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a have a very strong running saw. I brought this use this saw as an example. Now this is a very old, probably from the probably from the 70s. It's a home light C72. I really don't know much anything about the specifics of the saw, but I'm using it as a general as a explanation on what exactly you're looking for when purchasing a used saw. As you can see, this thing is used quite a bit. I tried to fix it a little bit to see if it would run. It won't. And it's just, it would not be worth the money to put it into it. I mean, granted, it's a nice, it's a nice looking old, old school muscle saw, but you know, it's just not worth my time. I'd rather be, I'd rather put the money into a saw where I can actually use it. But let's get back to the point at hand. You can never always judge alone a saw by its engine compression because there could always be piston scoring and cylinder scratches in it and it could still pump out a decent amount, of co decent amount of compression and run okay. It won't run as well as a saw that's in, great, in really good running condition, but it'll run. The one thing we do is to test to make sure that the saw is in good shape is we remove the muffler. Because removing the muffler, you can get access to the piston and to the cylinder wall and be able to take a look and see if there's any kind of engine scoring whatsoever on the piston and also on the, on the cylinder. And also you get to see if the piston rings are either fused onto the piston at all because if that's the case then you know that there's something wrong. Take the muffler off. One thing I noticed part of the muffler bracket is busted on it. That's not a really good sign. Now here, I'm going to try to get this position so it so you can actually really see it very well. As you can see, we're on the exhaust port of the saw itself. Let me just pull the starter. Let me just pull the starter handle, and as you can see right here, you do we do have some definite scoring on the piston itself. Now that would mean that this saw has had ex excessive wear on it, or the person didn't put enough oil in the mix of the gas to properly lubricate the cylinder, which does cause the piston and cylinder to score. Now in situations like this, you're not going to get peak performance out of the chainsaw. And if you do see this in a used chainsaw, my idea, my best rec my best recommendation would not to purchase the saw because eventually the scoring is going to continue and it's the it's going to get worse and worse to the point where either a the piston is going to season the cylinder or you're going to get next to no compression at all and the saw is not going to work at all and you're pretty much talking a whole top end rebuild 
piston and cylinder and in most cases it's just not worth putting that much money into the saw if it's a really old saw like an old 066 I mean you're talking like OEM cylinders are probably over probably close to three probably actually more close to four hundred dollars for a replacement cylinder I and mean, granted the saw is like a thousand dollars but if you got a saw that's got extensive wear like that then you could also have problems with the bearings problems with the crankshaft oil seals also the gasket that seals around the saw seals the crankcase so what I'm trying to get at is if you see any kind of scoring whatsoever on the in the saw if it's really really noticeable then I would recommend not buying the saw I would just say you know I'm not interested in it if you don't see if you don't see a whole lot of scoring in it then it's then the saw still has some life left into it now if it's a big expensive saw like an like a steel 066 660 880 or Husqvarna 394 you can definitely buy an OEM and replace it I mean if the saw is in otherwise really good shape I mean the bearings feel fine there's no noise everything else about the saw is in good shape the crankcase is in good shape there's no cracks or anything like that then I would recommend replacing the piston and cylinder you can always get good aftermarket kits uh, one that I know of is Odd Meteor it's a really good really good brand I mean I've actually the piston that's in my three that was in my 394 and also in my 350 is a Meteor piston and it's uh, it, they're very nice the one for the Husqvarna I mean both of them were chrome plated which they're not that great but to be honest with you if you don't want to spend over a hundred bucks to get a new pist uh, OEM piston aftermarket pistons are really good and just like I said before in previous videos you really need to look for a piston and cylinder that has a Nicosil coating because that is about as close to OEM quality as you're gonna get with an aftermarket kit but just like I said before if you can see a you saw like this in person, always take the muffler off, because then you can really tell how well the saw was taken care of. Plus, you always want to take you always want to take the muffler off with the with the used saw, because if the muffler is rusted, kind of like this one. Oh, here, let's get this out of zoom. If you got a rusted muffler like this. You can get sedimentation buildup in the in the muffler itself, which then could break off, get into the cylinder, and actually cause the scoring itself. And if you have that, then pretty much the saw is absolutely useless. So you could be paying two or three hundred dollars for a used saw, and you pretty much just lost your money right then and there. But as you can see with this saw, I mean, if I wanted to just keep it and use it as kind of like a collector's piece, I could. I really don't want to. I mean, if I'm going to have a a vintage saw I would rather have one that actually works and I can use it because then it would just be something really nice to have so hope you take the this video to good heart and realize when you're actually shopping out there for a used chainsaw is to really go try to go over it with a fine tooth comb as much as possible because you don't know what you're getting into you don't know if you got someone that treats their outdoor equipment like crap and they run it with very little oil and then you're going to get all that scoring and scratching in it so always try to be your best judgment if you can afford brand new I would definitely go with a higher with a higher quality saws like Husqvarna, Steel, Efco, Sax Dalmar they're very good brands they've been in the business for a very long time and once you pay the initial money for it it really comes up in return when you if you use the saw a lot especially for firewood cutting so hope you like the video youtubers uh, always leave comments oh I always like it but if you're gonna be leaving negative stuff and just don't bother because I'm really I'm really annoyed and sick of it so y'all take care youtubers